Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Please type yes in the chat. If you can hear me. <clears throat> okay, all praises. I had a microphone issue. Oof. Thank God I'm somewhat of a techie. I say that I'm not, but sometimes I am. <laughs> okay, um, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Sorry, I'm a little bit late, but we are going to get through this. Thank you for uh, joining Make Banana Oil with me. I am your host, Ciobella, the medicine woman, and today we are in my little tiny kitchen. And um, just to do some in-house stuff, please visit CocoFresh.com and um, check out. Today, I am doing a 25% off discount off of everything in my store um, until sundown. And also, um, today we are featuring the goat milk shampoo bar soap. And I absolutely love this soap because you could use it on hair and skin. It's uh, gentle enough for hair and skin. And I put all types of wonderful herbs in it, um, all types of wonderful herbs to enrich the hair and the skin. So um, check out my goat milk soap. And uh, what else uh, is on there? Just um, personal herbalist. Personal herbalist is on there. And that's for if you are dealing with an ailment and you need um, some sort of tonic or a concoction or decoction or something uh, made specifically for you, um, you will hire me as your personal herbalist, pay a, a, a upfront one-time fee, and um, I will make it for you, bottle it for you, ship it out for you, um, or... Um, for your healing. And then um, today or sometime next week, I will be shutting down until after Passover because um, I gotta get ready for Passover. <laughs> and when we come back, we are going to have um, more exciting products, some more exciting um resources. I'm going to have a subscription. So these um, make certain things with me. You will need a monthly prescription, um, but I will still continue to do um, a weekly uh, health talk and tips, um, but mainly going over articles about health and just enlightening all of us about different health issues going on that we need to know about. Okay. So Let's get into it. So um, today we're making banana oil and I decided to make banana oil because I uh, discovered this wonderful product and I said, you know what? This is not something that I'm going to sell because the bananas be looking like this, you know? And when you store the bananas, when you store the banana peel, it actually, you know, turns black. I'm not dealing with a whole bunch of this um, <laughs> on a weekly basis to make. So I figured this is um, something that would be great to teach you all how to make. So I'm going to go over the benefits of um, banana oil. And they are some really life-changing benefits. Um, I've been, I made my first batch um, about three weeks ago and I'm already almost done with it. Um, I've been using it on myself. I've been using it on the children and um, it's, it's great for, when I tell y'all, <laughs> when y'all make this stuff and y'all start using it, I have on absolutely no foundation at all. I just been using the banana oil and I've been using it from head to toe. I've been even 
putting it in my um, newborn's hair and on his skin and um, been using it at night for him. And um, <sighs> y'all start to use this stuff. <laughs> okay, so some, um, some benefits of banana oil. And the first thing that comes up on every site that I've been researching on for banana oil is that it's anti-aging, okay? So uh, bananas have a whole bunch of um, vitamins and minerals in it. And of course, we all know about potassium, but it has a lot of vitamin A in it. And if you know anything about vitamin A, vitamin A is the thing that repairs the skin. So if you have any type of rash or scar, or um, even after having a C-section or anything, you know, dealing with the skin, vitamin A um, coupled with vitamin C is going to do the job. So um, that's having like maybe um, some carrot juice, carrot, carrots have a lot of um, vitamin A in it and coupling that with like lemon juice, um, putting lemons in everything is putting the vitamin C in everything. And vitamin C acts as like a truck driver that's dropping off its products everywhere it needs to go. So um, when you are taking herbs or taking supplements or something like that, and you take vitamin C with it, the vitamin C is the very thing that makes sure the um, supplements and the minerals are going where it needs to go in the body. So in the first place it will go is if there's any damage somewhere. So it seeks out the damage that's in your body and brings, you know, things, vitamins, supplements, herbs, all that stuff to where it needs to go. So that's why you always want to make sure you squeeze a little bit of lemon in your tea. That's why lemon in the tea is so important. That's why lemon in the tea is so popular. Okay. But there's a whole bunch of things with vitamin C in it. The peel of an orange. Um, oranges are known for vitamin C. But where the most vitamin C is, is that white fleshy part of an orange or the orange peel. And we'll have a class on the orange peel at some point. Um, banana, bananas also remove scars and blemishes. Scars and blemishes and they're all gone. Okay. Um, it says, being that it's rich in vitamin C and other antioxidant compounds, this oil can provide a major boost in the immune system. Uh, first and foremost, it can protect the skin from airborne pathogens and infections, but, and that's good, that's something that I wanted to bring out um, as well. The airborne pathogens, pathogens and infections, look at what time we're in. Okay, um, I believe this thing that's out here is being sprayed on us um, and it's coming in through our not eyes, nose and mouth, but also I believe it's coming in through the skin because the skin is the largest organ in our body and a lot of things um, pass through the skin to get inside of us. That's why banana oil is so important because it fights against infections on the skin and pathogens, okay? Um, so everything is not just beauty, okay? A lot of things is um, for health and wellness, okay? And if you work on your health and wellness, the beauty will come out, okay, automatically. Your God-given beauty that you have will just automatically come out once you start working on the inner, okay? Um, but it's also absorbed through the skin and can help your internal system defend against infections, bacteria, and viruses as well. And I noticed that when I started using the banana oil on my children, um, their little runny noses and 
uh, little stuff like that was decreasing um, each day that I was using the banana oil on your skin, okay? So banana oil, oil also prevents dandruff because it's packed with so many vitamins and minerals and also it fights against infections and things like that. So quite naturally, it'll fight against dandruff. Um, it helps with hair care and it also controls oily skin and dry skin, okay? So um, after I had my fifth child, no, that's not true. After I had my third child, <laughs> I started suffering with dry skin, dry everything, just dry, 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 okay? And um, I started coming up and making um, my own type of skincare, and the skincare was definitely working. Um, I had dry patches, you know, all throughout my cheeks and everything, and um once I started making um, the stuff, it started clearing up, well, praises. Lately, I've been using the banana oil and the banana oil seems as though it has the same type of effect of when I was using the, um, I was using the cleanser, the toner, um, the serum, which I still use now to this day. And then I put the banana oil on top of everything that I was using, okay? But at night, I just cleanse my face and put the banana oil on it, and that's it. And I noticed that um, it is helping with the dry skin, but it also helps with oily skin because it calms down your oil production. So oily skin, you have an overactive um, oil production that's in your skin. So I found that um, it will calm that down. And um, if I have time, I'll do a demonstration on how to do um, a uh, oil cleanse with the banana oil, okay? Um, it's one of the best massage oils. And it's one of the best massage oils. Why? Because it fights against infections and it fights against pathogens and it has so many vitamins and nutrients in it. Um, and then it actually, I didn't put any type of essential oils in it and it smells a lot like bananas. And I was not expecting that, but um, I'm not one to walk around smelling like fruit. I'd rather smell like um, herbs and flowers, but I like this smell. So, you know, it, it worked out for me. <laughs> it worked out for me. Okay, so let's, um, if y'all have any questions, please put it in the chat. You know, I like interaction. If you have any questions, just put it in the chat, any comments, anything like that. I love interaction. Okay, so let's start. So what I'm using, and can everybody see me fine? Is everybody? So what I'm going to use is my, I'm going to use some coconut oil, some organic virgin coconut oil. I'm also going to use some avocado oil. And being that my children did not listen to me and keep all of their banana peels. I only have these were from all from yesterday and the day before yesterday. I have um, one, two, three, and then I have um, one that I'm going to peel right now. So we're going to start by peeling our bananas. Now, who else is making banana oil with me? This on a plate. I could make my three-year-old smoothie a little bit later with this. So there is a way that you can make the banana oil. Um, okay, great. So, okay, Oriah is making um, the banana oil. Great. 
Okay, so let's take our banana peels and we are going to get a bowl and we're gonna wash it off, okay? We're gonna wash off the peels because we're getting them from the grocery stores. And um, unless you already washed off yours, I'm gonna wash off mine. Sometimes I forget. Zakaya, so look what I got. I was like, this little bowl is gonna come in handy. Thanks, sis. <laughs> okay, so just wash your bananas off thoroughly. Just you could just rinse them real good unless you have a um fruit and vegetable wash. Okay, so I'm gonna spray mine with this fruit and vegetable wash. And then I'm gonna just really rinse it, rinse it, rinse it really good. And you can rinse the inside and out. Don't be don't be afraid to get the banana peel wet. You can definitely use the stem as well. Okay. So after you rinse and wash your banana peels, you are going to take a paper towel and you're going to dry them thoroughly. Okay. Let me see, angle this. Okay, y'all can see the bananas, okay? So we're gonna dry it. Dry it thoroughly. Dry it just by pressing down on it. So the first time I made it, I just used um, avocado oil and I noticed that it gave it like a emulsifying effect. So um, the avocado kind of thickened up the oil, it felt like. So when you rub on the banana oil, it kind of feels somewhat thick which I really like. And um, I mentioned to get two containers because the best way to store your banana oil is in the refrigerator. So you don't have to, so I put the majority of the oil in the refrigerator and then I have a little bottle of oil um, that I keep out and use daily. And then I just fill it in um, as it empties out. So this is for my family's use. So I'm not using any type of gloves or anything. But if you're gonna start making this for people, make sure you use your gloves. Okay, so dry this really good because um, you don't want too much, you don't want any water in your oil. That will break down the oil much quicker. Dry it on the inside and out. So sis, what um, type of oil will, carrier oil will you be using? Yeah, if you can. Okay, so one way to 
do this, I just want to make I can see. Okay, so one way you can do this is to cut up your bananas peels into little pieces like this. Now, I didn't do it this way the first time. I'm not gonna do it this way this time either, but you are welcome to do it this way. What I'm going to do, now if you're using a knife and a cutting board, Cut it in little pieces, little tiny pieces. Just cut it in little tiny pieces. But I'm gonna put these pieces in my blender with the oil, okay? This is my old faithful blender. So I'm gonna put this in my blender and then I'm gonna just use this avocado oil. And I'm just going to cover it so I can blend it up. Okay. Okay, y'all, so I'm about to blend. Okay, so I just need a little blend. I don't need to puree it. There's still big chunks in here. Um, yeah, and so now I'm gonna take this And since I only have four banana peels, I'm gonna use the small pot. This is a small stainless steel pot. And make sure there's no water in your part in your pot because water and oil do not mix. Okay. So make sure there's absolutely no water in your pot. Pour the banana mixture in the pot. Okay. Now I'm going to get a large scoop of the coconut oil. Now I don't you don't have to do any type of measurements with this um, type of uh, mixture, okay? Just eyeball it. When you become an herbalist and you're making stuff for your family over the years, you're gonna learn how to just eyeball um, certain things. Um, it just makes sense in your head. Um, so I'm sorry, guys, if you are a measurement type of person, I'm sorry. So I'm going to take a few scoops of the coconut oil. I would not suggest um, using essential oils because 
unless you are like a Roman therapist and you know what scents go great with um, the scent of the banana, but I'm telling you all, the banana has its own scent. So this is the first time I'm using the coconut oil with this mixture. So now I blended it in the avocado. I put several scoops of coconut oil and the coconut oil, since um, the bananas um, have such a effect on the skin as far as infection, I decided to use coconut oil as well because coconut oil too, has those type of um, properties. So the coconut oil helps to get rid of parasites, bacteria, and things like that as well. So um, after your kids come from school, after your kids come from, you know, uh, being out around a whole bunch of children, it's best to come home, no matter how late it is, give them a bath and rub them down with this stuff, okay? rub them down with this stuff and it will help kill anything that they collected that's sitting on their skin. Um, anything like that, um, it will help uh, to kill it, okay? So now I'm gonna put this on my stove um, with low heat, okay, with low heat. And then um, we're gonna talk about the skin. So um, with the low heat, you want to bring your um, mixture up to a simmer. You want it to start kind of like bubbling a little bit first and then kind of turn it down. Um, not too much low, but kind of low medium, okay? So it still kind of have like a low simmering effect. And you can cover it. Just don't let it boil. I had a crazy day yesterday. My day was crazy, okay? I had a 90 minute massage yesterday and came home to some craziness. So I didn't really get to get everything together, like all together right away, but it's working out and I'm, I'm glad I came. So I'm gonna go get my chair and uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the skin. Okay, my sisters brought me a um, Thai latte with coconut milk, no sugar. Okay. I'll pull up my little notes here. Um, can you use olive oil? Absolutely, you can. Um, I have olive oil and grape seed. That's absolutely perfect. I have, my favorite oil is olive oil. Um, olive oil is an ancient oil and olive oil has been used for plenty things um, inside and out. So olive, olive oil is normally my go-to um, for carrier oils because I love the thickness and the richness of it. And I love anything that you can take internally 
and externally. The only thing um, with olive oil is that um, you, the, the cooking of the olive oil is what kind of messes up the property of the olive oil. And I probably should have mentioned that, but I'm telling you, still use the olive oil, it's gonna come out great, okay? And what you could do is, um, if you're making a whole lot at once, cause you could, the last time I did it, I made a lot, I had a lot of banana peels and I made all of it, my pot was much bigger. And I just covered the banana, um, the banana peels with the oil and I let it simmer and we're gonna let it simmer for about 45 minutes. And then um, I strained it off and then I added some oil to that, okay? All righty. Just pulling up my Okay. Okay, so just a little more points about uh, the banana oil um, that I wanted to make is that um, it soothes the skin. So if you do have um, a child with eczema or if you have eczema or something like that, this would be excellent um, to put on uh, his his or her flare-ups um, and also using banana oil on the skin boosts your immune system. Can you believe that? It boosts your immune system. So um, you want to make sure that you are using this from head to toe. And another thing that I noticed um, over the years just having a bunch of children is that if you have a child with a runny nose, his nose has been running for like weeks, um, sometimes it's just time to wash your child's hair. A lot of germs get stuck in the scalp, in the hair, and um, it's causing your child to have a allergic reaction to the germs that's stuck in his hair. So it's good to make sure you keep the antibacterial soap on hand um, and make sure you just say, hmm, I haven't washed, you know, as black folks, we don't be washing our kids. We don't be washing our hair every day, you know? So if it's been like two weeks, three weeks, and you notice that you're sick or you got a runny nose and your child does have a lot of hair, make sure you just give them a nice fresh wash, from top to top, bottom, use the banana oil in it from top to bottom. Um, it's also a great nighttime oil because uh, bananas have serotonin in it and serotonin does give a calming effect, okay? Serotonin gives a calming effect and banana has, bananas have a lot of, um, of the serotonin in it. So, um, I like to give um, my children and even myself, I would have a banana smoothie the last um, portion of the day and it kind of winds me down a little bit. But bananas are twofold. You know, <clears throat> it can give you energy and it can also calm you down. And that's the same thing as what a really good grade of coffee 
it's supposed to do for you as well. A lot of the coffee, like Folgers and um, Uxtello and stuff that's on the market, that's readily available, it gives you the jitters because it's not a high quality type of coffee. It just tastes really good. But coffee is actually supposed to keep you alert, but relax you as well. Um, but those are those specialty, really expensive coffees that people normally um, don't go and purchase, okay? Okay, so now we're gonna go over the skin. Make sure you watch your banana oil. Make sure it don't start boiling. down a little bit. We're gonna let that, we're gonna let that boil. We're gonna let that simmer until, until, be until about 8.45, <laughs> but we'll see. Okay. All right, so let's go over uh, the skin. Just, we're gonna do some fun facts about the skin. I'm not gonna go into like anatomy type of stuff about the skin. I'm gonna do that um, on another chat, like really going into uh, the process that the skin goes through. But I'm just going to go over a couple of fun facts about the skin just to keep it light. But um, when you talk about the skin um, and keeping it clear, you really are talking about the liver, okay? So um, we went over the liver last week. So I'm gonna upload that video hopefully today, but if you really wanna work on your skin, you have to work on your liver. The liver is a dynamic tool that the Most High put in our body and it's one of the most important organs in our body. It pretty much, it has over 500 functions. And I couldn't even go over all the things that the liver does, but the liver and the skin goes hand in hand. And they are the two largest organs in the body, okay? Um, and uh, like I said, if you want to, clean your skin and make your skin nice and clear, you want to focus on the liver. So when I upload that, just make sure you uh, go ahead and uh, watch that and understand what's going on with the liver. But the liver has a lot to do with, um, with the blood, okay? Pumping out, making sure it detoxify the blood and all types of stuff. I just love that organ. That's like one of my favorite organs to focus on when I'm detoxing and just to study because it's really a fascinating organ. You cannot live without that organ, okay? But it does regenerate. But anyway, I'm sure everybody on here was on there last week, so um, I'm not going to go into the liver. Um, okay, so Black people um, have a thicker dermis layer, the skin second layer, um, the skin second layer of the skin gives it its flexibility and its strength. So Black folks, we have thicker skin. That's why we can kind of take more <laughs> hardship than these other folks, because we got thick skin. <laughs> okay. That was uh, corny, but um, we have thicker skin than other races, okay? Um, and the skin second layer of the skin gives its, its flexibility and strength. The reason it's thicker is because it contains more collagen, uh, which is also proven to delay the signs of age. Okay, so now I gotta turn this down. It's already just smelling wonderful. So now I had to turn mine down onto low because it came up to a boil, okay? So you wanna turn it down after it comes up to a boil. 
Um, so which is also proven to delay the signs of aging. So collagen is extremely important, especially if you are approaching uh, your 30s and your 40s, you start to lose collagen in um, your skin. And then that's where, when your skin starts to um, wrinkle and things like that. So that's why um, you wanna focus on keeping collagen in your skin, okay? And you could take collagen internally and you could also do a collagen mask on your skin. That's why a lot of, um, of the other nations do Botox and biotin injections and things like that because they're trying to put the collagen back in their skin. But um, your collagen will stay nice and plump and um, readily available if you're not um, beating up on your system as far as eating a whole bunch of junk, the fast food and stuff like that, soda, um, constantly drinking alcohol, these things kind of pull the collagen out of your skin, okay? Uh, so uh, the reason it's thicker is because it contains more collagen. So the second layer contains more collagen, which is also proven to delay the signs of aging. If you have uh, light skin, you will have to start using products to help the signs of aging earlier um, than others. If you are darker skin, you can wait a bit, but you're not off the hook. You will eventually start to wrinkle, okay? Um, but whatever complexion you are, you wanna make sure you are taking care of your skin the younger you are, you take care of your body, the more you have a chance of aging gracefully. Some of us didn't get this knowledge and this, um, these um, tips until you know we're older, but it's not too late to start because like I said, the liver can regenerate itself. So the skin regenerates itself. Um, so, once you start cleaning up your diet, detoxifying, making sure you exercise every day, getting that good downpour of sweat at least once a day, your skin will naturally start tightening back up and clearing itself out, okay? The skin makes up about 15% of your total body weight, 15%. That's a pretty large amount in my opinion. Okay, the average adult has nearly 21 square feet of skin that contains over 11 miles of blood vessels. And I wanted to make a point about that. The blood vessels, the blood you have, so that's 11 miles of blood vessels. A lot of us can't even walk 11. A lot of us can't even walk three miles. Okay, so we have 11 miles of blood vessels in our skin. So if we are not circulating our bodies, what is happening to those blood vessels? They're becoming stagnant and stuck and clogged. Okay, that's why it's so important. That's why the Bible says you got to exercise a little bit. You got to exercise a little bit. Exercise profits you some, okay? Because if we are not circulating our system, these things become sluggish, okay? Blood vessels become sluggish. I was listening to um, the doctor's channel. I like to listen to the doctor's channel. And this guy called in and said that he went blind. He's an avid reader. He reads about three books a day. He's probably read over about a million books in his lifetime. And he sits and he reads and he reads and he reads. And he ended up reading himself blind. So um, he went to a holistic, so um, he went to a doctor and the doctor um, said that what happened was is a vessel detached 
uh, from his cornea or something like that. And so they was able to attach it back and he got his um, vision back. And then it happened to the other eye. So then he finally went to a holistic doctor and the holistic doctor was getting into his lifestyle, um, um, listening to his lifestyle because as a holistic doctor, you got to ask about everything. You got to ask about your emotions. You got to ask about, you know, what time of day do you start working? What time do you get off? What time do you go to sleep? All of these things have a lot to do with your health. Okay, so he went to a holistic doctor and the holistic doctor found okay, he sits around and he reads all the time and he's not exercising. So the doctor said, you're sitting in a chair, you're reading, you're probably reading, the stuff that you're reading is probably great. You're probably learning a lot, but you're not circulating your system. You have to have a downpour of sweat every single day to keep your blood vessels clean, to keep your liver clean, to keep all these things um, flowing and working and not getting stuck and clogged. So he started just simply power walking 20 minutes away, I mean, 20 minutes a day and his eyes opened up. His eyes um, became a lot good. He didn't have to get um, the surgery on the other eye. I don't know what happened, but his eye, he ended up having his vision back almost uh, 2020. And I'm gonna do a class on the eyes at some point because some of the things that I'm learning about the eyes is just amazing. So it says, where can you find and um, the upload the class? Oh, that class was awesome. I'm gonna try to upload that today. <laughs> Sorry, it's been a little crazy on the home front. A little bit, a little crazy, okay? Um, so we have 11 miles of blood vessels in our skin alone. Um, a single, a single square inch of skin has about 300 sweat glands, 300 sweat glands. So imagine if you're never sweating. So I know if we're not sweating under our arms, we're using all of this deodorant, blocking the sweat that is supposed to come out under our arms, which in turn is causing breast cancer. And men get breast cancer too, okay? So it says a single square inch. So a square inch is about like that. A single square inch has about 300 sweat glands. Imagine if those sweat glands never sweat. Okay, I'm talking to myself too. I go to the gym, but I'm not consistent like how I should be because I'm always busy. But you have to, and, and if you can't go to the gym go and run up and down your block, okay? If you have a gym with a sauna in it, take advantage of that sauna. That sweat and those toxins are supposed to come out. They're not supposed to stay in, okay? When they stay in, it causes all types of um, odors and things like that. So yeah, when you sweat and you go to the gym, you're supposed to be offensive. You come home, you shower, and you put on um you put on is it anti you put on a deodorant does that does not um stop you from sweating. It just kills the bacteria. And let me give you another little tip. Lemon juice takes away this because when you sweat, it's the bacteria that smells, okay? So when you rub lemon juice under your arms, I have to do that with my 12 year old, okay? Cause you know, them hormones at that age kind of is running wild. So he knows like I'll cut up some lemons for him and he'll get in the shower and he'll scrub his underarms with lemon juice. 
with the lemons and then he discards those lemons and then he takes a shower normally and he does not he won't have any problems with his underarms until he needs to start using lemon juice again so it's a build up of bacteria that forms under um on your underarms that's causing the smell okay so let me not get so sad <laughs> um <clears throat> the thickest skin is found on your feet and the thinnest area of your skin um, are your eyelids. The thickest is your feet and the thinnest is your eyelids. That's why the Most High had us walking on our feet. And our eyes, um, I started wearing, these are non-prescription glasses, but these are glasses that are designed to block the Blu-rays from the computer, from using the computer and the phone so much. And also um, COVID, the last time I had COVID, I had gotten COVID like three times already, it's 2020, but um, thank God I'm still here. But the last time I got COVID, I noticed that it started, I felt like my eyes were just running um, a lot more than usual. And by that time, we had already started wearing the mask and stuff like that, but our eyes are exposed. So when I go out, I wear my mask and my glasses as well as a shield. So that's why people um, in the hospitals, they know to wear the mask and to wear the shield over their face because they know that the COVID is getting in through their eyes as well. Okay, so that's why I started wearing my COVID blockers. That's what I call it. And then also it blocks the Blu-rays and stuff from your phone and your, okay? Um, so the thinnest area are your eyelids. The skin renews itself every 28 days and sheds about nine pounds of dead skin cells every year nine pounds of dead skin cells every year. Some of the dust in your home may actually be dead skin. And another article that I was reading that it was saying that um, about, um, I forgot exactly what number, but it was at least 50% of the dust in your home is actually skin. That is disgusting. <laughs> Oh, that's why I like to wash my sheets often. And I don't like people in my bed, okay? Because I feel like I'm rolling around in their skin. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, some of the dust in your home may actually be dead skin. Your skin has some nerves that are connected to your muscles to help you react more quickly to extreme temperatures or pain, okay? So our skin has nerves all through it to help us that are connected to our muscles. Um, and it's connected to a lot of other things that you know we could go into once we do the anatomy about the skin. Um, connect the muscles to help you react more quickly to extreme temperature or pain, which is why I got this mark. <laughs> I don't know if you can see it, but I got burnt the other day from steam. <laughs> I got burnt from steam, y'all. But it's, um, I just put aloe on it. I cut an aloe plant and I just rubbed the gel on it. It didn't bubble up, it just turned black and it's um, about to start shedding. So all praises, that dark spot is about to start shedding. Um, some of the dust in your, okay, um, the skin has nerves, um, changes in, oh, this is a great point. So changes in your skin can often be a warning sign of a medical condition or changes in your body health. So if you all of a sudden develop a rash somewhere or a mole or, um, a dry patch somewhere on your skin, 
you're going to want to find out exactly what it is because um, it can mean something, okay? I'm not going to start giving y'all a list of things that it can mean because now y'all be diagnosing yourselves and all that and start panicking. So I'm not going to do that. But um, what you can do is see a dermatologist about it or talk to your doctor about it. It's very, very, very important that we all have a doctor, okay? Um, you don't have to take whatever the doctor prescribes, you know, especially if it's like a steroid injection or something like that, but it's good to know. It's good to have them, you know, say, hey, give you an actual diagnosis of what's going on with you. And then you could really kind of go and take it from there to see, um, you know, what you can do about it. If you want to go the medical route, um, the Western route of healing or putting a patch on it, that's up to you. Or you could take the Eastern route of actual healing, um, whatever's going on internal. But it's good either way to have a doctor, okay? So you would want to get a dermatologist and find out what's going on with the skin, what is actually going on with the skin. Um, the dermatologists have all types of tools and things like that um, to find out what you're dealing with. Sometimes um, regular doctors will diagnose somebody with eczema and they actually don't have eczema. They have a dry patch in a certain place of the skin, but some, but you want to make sure you go to a specialist to find out, okay? Um, there are at least five types of receptors in the skin that respond to pain and to touch. So five types of um, receptors. And uh, sleep is vital for healthy, vibrant, and youthful in. And that time where my skin started getting dry patches and things like that, and I had to create something for my skin, I was not sleeping at all. I was not sleeping. Now um, I make sure I make it a point to create a sleeping uh, regimen. Like you have to tell your body, okay, it's down time, it's wind, it's wind down time. So you do your whole ritual of what it is that you do to get your body prepared to go to sleep. Especially if you have a hard time going to sleep, you have to create a whole routine to tell your body it's time for you to shut down, okay? So for some people that's a hot bath or a hot shower, some hot tea, or maybe some banana peel tea or, um, a banana smoothie, whatever, um, essential oils, lavender, whatever it is, and then like maybe a movie or um, some sort of somebody with talking helps me to go to sleep. So those are all the things that I have to do to kind of wind myself down to go to sleep. I can't drink coffee at night. Um, what's the Calm product? Um, let, oh yeah, magnesium is a lot of times we have headaches, sleep disorders, insomnia and stuff like that because we are um, magnesium deficient. And the best way to get magnesium in your body is you could get magnesium oil or you could take an Epsom salt bath and that puts magnesium right back into your system, okay? Um, I also came up with my um, Be Not Anxious for Anything um, herbal tea. That tea is something that you can, um, that tea is something that you can drink and you can pour it in your bath, okay? Okay, so um, it's 8.34. <clears throat> so we have about 10 to 15 minutes more of, um, it boiling, but just for the sake of time, I'm going to sift mine now so y'all can see that process. And um, 
and then bottle it. Okay, so let me go get my bottle and, and everything. And if you want to keep yours boiling for um, the next 15, 20 minutes, that's great. Um, you could even keep it boiling for another 30 minutes, but I'm going to take mine off. I'm going to sift it and then I'm going to bottle it. Okay. So you all, <clears throat> y'all are gonna want, um, y'all are going to want it to cool down a little bit before you start dealing with it. But what I'm going to do is just go ahead and do it. This is your kitchen smelling like bananas or what? <laughs> Okay, so let me try to, I'm not sure if y'all can see this, but it turned completely dark and it smells so good. You know what it smells like? Um, banana bread. So I have a um, sifter that looks like this. If you are using a mesh bag or a cloth or anything like that, do not do it now coming straight off of the fire, okay? Do not do that. You wait for it to come uh, cool completely down and then you um, strain it through your bag. Do not strain it right now. Good morning, how you doing? this over the sink. So I have a sifter. I was looking into buying a almond cow or some sort of milk, nut milk um, machine, but then I seen this because my blender is just the bomb. My blender is called Commercial Blender by Wolf and Puff. It was only $60. And let me tell y'all, it works like a, a Vitamix. It also um, heats up your food just in case you want to make soup. So I, I love my blender and I had it for years and it still have not broken down. So I figured once it breaks down, maybe I'll do the Vitamix or I'll buy another $60 Wolfgang Pluck blender, but it's a commercial blender, okay? I'm gonna give this a quick stir. Y'all have any questions, post it in the chat. All righty. What's the matter? What's hurting? Okay. Go lay down in my bed. Get in my bed. Okay, so I'm going to pour it, use this, and pour this. Um, but I'm just going to do it over the sink.
Mommy. Yes. Oh, um, my hair gets fruity. Why? Fruity. Hey, y'all. I'm going to have to wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is about how much I got. And now you can always add more oil to this, but this is, um, I only had four, um, I only had four uh, banana pills, so I made much less this time. And, you know, I do think it's kind of good to make less because you do have to keep it in the refrigerator, but it's up to you. The next time I do it, I'm really going to keep all my banana pills this time, next time around. And I'm going to make a large, like this size bottle, and I'm going to keep it in the fridge because I absolutely love this. This is became my favorite, favorite oil. Okay. So I'm going to press out the rest of the oil so it could fall into the jar at the bottom. And remember, if y'all are using a nut bag, make sure this cools all the way down. We don't want no accidents, okay? I'm going to press this down. I'm going to put a little bit more avocado oil in it. Now I took the top off. I'm gonna add some more avocado. Then I'm going to add it to my bottle. Stir it just a little bit. Now, if you have a funnel or if you have something like this, please use this or use a funnel. Mine has a, this has a pour. So it's going to be easy for me to pour in the bottle. But just make sure you have the right equipment. Okay, y'all, so I have actually a good amount because I have some left over.
So I want to say thank you all so much for joining me today. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat now. If not, um, I have a 20% sale today. Please take advantage. Um, I will be closing my shop um, sometime next week to prepare for our highest holy day, one of our highest holy days. And um, I'll be opening back up sometime after uh, with some more exciting things. But thank you so much. I appreciate y'all for joining me. And um, I love you all. Thank you, amazing benefits, and I can't wait to try it. Okay, so I'll send you the rest of this. <laughs> uh, okay, so, y'all. Um, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please visit CocoFresh.com. Contact me if you need any type of health consultation and look out for my monthly subscription uh, where we'll be doing more make such and such with me. Um, we're gonna be doing cough syrup. We're gonna be doing, um, what else did I um, plan to do with y'all? Cough syrup, fire cider all types of things. Thank you so much. And make sure y'all post um, how much this, uh, make sure you post about today and make sure you post your banana oil. Okay, thank you.